What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. So today I've got that Volkswagen CC that I worked on a while back uh, putting a wheel bearing on it and today I'm going to go through it and just do a little tune up on it. So the backstory of why we're doing this is me and my uncle went to a car show about an hour away from our house and we just hit the interstate and we hit a pothole and after we hit the pothole the car just started jerking. It had lost all its power. The check engine light started flashing and we pretty much thought we were screwed <laughs> for the rest of the night trying to get home. But me knowing what I know about cars, I figured it was something simple like a coal pack or something that just happened to go out. It felt like we were really down a cylinder and that's actually what happened. So we got out of the car on the side of the road. I popped the cover off the motor and one of the coal packs was actually a little bit loose. So I don't know if we jarred one loose hitting that bump or what, but I pushed that coal pack back on and the car didn't run any better. The check engine light quit flashing, so I think I might have helped it out. I think we might have had two coals with issues, but honestly, I think one of the coals was going bad, and when we hit that pothole, it just it just shut it down. That was it. So I looked on my phone while we were there. We were about five miles away from the nearest auto parts store, so we started driving, and of course, we're in a ton of traffic. Felt like it took forever to get to this store, and we're barely rolling, hoping the car didn't die in the middle of the road. Uh, we got to the store, they plugged it up, and they said, yep, uh, cylinder number one, the coal pack was bad. So I went ahead and got a coal pack while we were there. I swapped it out. But while I had the cover off the car, I noticed that one of the other coal packs had been replaced at some point before he bought it. Now, this thing now has 105,000 miles on it. So, of course, everything under the hood is getting a little bit worn out. All this stuff has probably never been done. But me seeing that one pack had already been changed and another one just went out on us, I told him we should probably go ahead and just do a little tune up on it. Go ahead and replace the last two and do some and put some spark plugs in it. That way he'll never have to worry about it. If you have a car like this that just has coal packs, of course, tune ups are kind of a thing of the past. You don't really see shops with signs out to get a tune up on your vehicle anymore because spark plug wires and distributors and all that stuff is basically all controlled by the computer now. So unless a computer component goes bad, you never really have to mess with it. And that's kind of what we're dealing with with these coal packs here. So the parts I, I got were just two coal packs from Import Direct. I always buy these from O'Reilly's and I've used Import Direct for a lot of stuff and I've never had any trouble out of it. So I, I do recommend this brand. I think they're really good. And then of course, some NGK spark plugs. We went with the laser platinums because that's the best stuff you can buy. And the procedure for changing these things out is super simple. All you have to do on these Volkswagens is pop that cover off the top and then you can see all your coal packs right here. So the way I found out that one of them had already been replaced was because of the color. The top of the OE coal packs are like a brownish color and these two that are black are the brand new ones. So you can tell the difference and also on the other side of it there's actually some words on it that says Volkswagen or German or whatever they say. But to get the cable off all you have to do is push down on this little tab here and wiggle it loose. Just take all four of them off. Now this motor's hot, so I'm gonna grab a rag so I can pop these things out. So coal packs are really simple. All you really gotta do is just grab it, wiggle it back and forth a little bit. And once you break that seal loose, they just come right out. So that's all your coal pack is. And if you don't know the difference between a coal pack and a spark plug wire, basically the computer is inside of this thing and it creates its own spark. So whenever one goes bad, you just replace it. It's not like chasing down a wire or looking through a distributor to try to figure out which cylinder is bad. You just plug it up to a computer and the computer will tell you exactly which one is bad. So these are the two original ones. I'm gonna get rid of these. And then I'm also gonna pull off these ones that I just replaced so that I can get to the spark plugs and change those out as well. So of course changing your spark plugs is just as easy as on any other vehicle. All you do is just take them out swap them out, snug the new ones down, and you're good to go. So you can see the tip of the spark plug right here. You can see all the corrosion and stuff on the spark plug itself. 
So my guess is that these have probably never been changed in 100,000 miles. But you can see there's not very much oil on them, so that's good. It's using all the fuel whenever it comes in. But all that corrosion on there is just hurting the spark. It's not allowing it to get as bright of a spark as it could. So you're probably losing some power on that. But I'm gonna go ahead and swap the rest of these out. We'll get the new coal packs on and we'll hit the road. One last thing you wanna do, anytime you change a spark plug or a manifold bolt or something that's gonna get super hot, just put a little dab of anti-seize on the threads. That's about all you need, just smooth it out. And that'll ensure that the next time you change these plugs out, you're not gonna have to worry about them being corroded in the top of the head. So one thing I've also seen people do changing spark plugs out is some people will just drop the spark plug down in the hole and then put the socket on it and try to tighten it down. Don't ever do that because if you drop the spark plug down in the hole, it's gonna actually bend up the tip of the spark plug a little bit and it's gonna change the gap on it. If you change the gap on the plug, it's not gonna fire right and you could cause misfire issues that way as well. But always put your socket in there, start it by hand, and it should get tight. Once it's tight, all you're gonna to wanna to do is turn it about a half of a turn or so, and you'll feel it get super tight. Don't ever choke way back on a ratchet whenever you're doing spark plugs, but about half to three quarters of a turn. And that's about all you need right there. So that plug's done. We just got the other ones to swap out. And once we do that, we'll be ready to put the coal packs back in. So once you've got all your spark plugs changed out, all you gotta do is put all your ignition coils back in. And whenever they're all the way seated, you'll actually feel them click, just like you would a spark plug wire. So just make sure that you have them seated all the way up against the spark plug. Once you get your coal packs in, go ahead and make sure they're all tight like that. And then just work this harness back on. Try to put all four on at one time together and then click them all down. And this is another thing, just make sure you've got the harness on all the way because if you've got a loose connection, you're still gonna get a miss whenever you're driving. And once everything's down and tight, you can just put your cover back on. And that's it. All right, so I'm out just test driving the car, just making sure everything is working right and I don't have any issues before I give it back to him. But I guess the main question is, do cars with ignition coils really need tune-ups? Are tune-ups a thing of the past? And I would say, yeah, they definitely are. Because the way they design vehicles nowadays, they want them to be as maintenance-free as possible. They don't want people having to come in and pay for something as simple as a tune-up or worrying about plugs and wires and stuff like that. They just want everything controlled by a computer. So all you have to do is plug it up and it's gonna tell the technician what's wrong with it. So there's not a whole lot of actually fixing cars anymore. It's more just the car telling you what it needs and then you swapping out the part that's bad. But my recommendation with something like this is if you do have a pack go bad, kind of like he did, you know, the other ones, they could last another 100,000 miles or they could go bad the next day. And he's had this car for a few thousand miles now and had one coal pack replaced and didn't know it. And I also found out that they replaced one spark plug. So I don't understand why somebody would go in and just replace one spark plug. They really should have replaced all four while they were in there. It's not that expensive. That one, we had two coal packs go bad. And at that point, you're kind of just asking for the other two to go bad. And the fact that we were an hour away from home, trying to get home, you really just don't want to get stranded on the side of the highway um, with a bad coal pack, something that simple. So the good thing now is all four of the ignition coals are brand new. He's not gonna have to worry about that. The spark plugs are brand new. So the ignition system has basically had its own full tune up. And with the two packs that I pulled out that were still good, now he can keep those in his car if he ever needs a spare or for whatever reason. Uh, it's, just, it's just peace of mind, one less thing you have to worry about. And honestly, I doubt he's ever gonna have to replace another coal pack just because all four of them are brand new. But again, that's just how they design the cars nowadays. So with that, I hope this video was informative for you. Maybe answered some of your questions about if your vehicle does need a tune-up and when you should change a coal pack out. 
but I hope it also helps you change the coal packs on this vehicle. But that's all I've got for today. With that, I hope you guys are enjoying the content as always. Be sure to look for us on Instagram. It's Baker's DIY Lifestyle, just like it is here on YouTube. And be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the like button so that you don't miss out on any future content as I will keep on coming out with new how-tos and all kinds of do-it-yourself related things. So with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Thank you.